Apple has finally announced the release of their own AI. They call it Apple Intelligence. And in this video, we're going to talk about this. Hello, everyone. Welcome to T Tuesday. And my name is Filip Monilov. Today, I'm going to be covering the topic of artificial intelligence with Apple. And after finally, everyone has been waiting for it, I guess, for so long because almost any company you could think of they started releasing and connecting with different ai tools and well obviously apple is a big tech giant so something had to come out and yeah they made their own apple intelligence as they call it introducing apple intelligence smart apple well done ai you got that because i guess the i was already used but in the end they couldn't come up with something all right I'm gonna be drinking the tea which is I mean I reviewed one of this tea in the tea video you could check it out it's a long one but I'm not really gonna be talking about tea sorry guys <clears throat> yeah so let me just crack this up yeah basically I watched the conference from or like the keynote from Apple WWDC 2024 yesterday whenever that was going to be released basically that was the WWDC was on June 10th and uh, yeah probably I shouldn't I'm not going to mention too much what, what was on the actual event I like to discuss a couple of updates on the iOS or Mac OS and other operating systems for the devices like watch OS and things like that also, for some reason, guys, and there was an unnecessary amount of rainbow flags in the intro. You can see it for yourself. But overall presentation was uh, quite fun, I think. Let's talk about Mac OS. And honestly, I was kind of a little bit flabbergasted until the end. I was like, waiting, wait, are they not gonna talk about AI or Apple intelligence? It was rumored that these things are gonna come out and they're gonna present something. And they literally went through all the OSs and I was thinking, well, is that the end of the presentation? But then finally, and well, at last, they announced they, well, they are introducing Apple intelligence. And what that means, so I could, briefly talk about the topics that they covered with Apple intelligence and I think they're quite interesting just to keep in mind and be aware of what's coming in the future what's coming for Apple so I guess the first one of the first things that they are they're updating the Siri and they will be basically integrating their new intelligence with Siri and giving it lots of capabilities and I think they call it multi-platform, multi-app application. So then your Siri can use your information from several apps, detect it, put it all together, connect the dots, and present you with some kind of answer. Siri will have the ability to take hundreds of new actions in and across apps. So for example, if you need to find the location of a restaurant that's been mentioned previously in some kind of message, from your friend then you could ask Siri or how do I get to this place that my friend mentioned in whatever message and the Siri and the Apple intelligence will find you and tell you where exactly you're gonna be going without you having to be going through the app trying to find a message and then calculating the route so it will take it even a step further for asking you if you want to get the locations to that place like a map and so on so I guess some of the interesting features and it's just gonna be a matter of time till we discover the full potential of the model I think that's pretty interesting but I guess what's more important they were talking about several features that I guess for me are a little bit concerning they are exciting yes so I could mention some of them 
a couple were talking about the text editing so I, I guess a lot of the language models are currently working with text and understanding of you know, just different language relations in that sense so just simple texts and you could be writing an email and it would probably come up with an auto response if you get certain message from someone it would prompt you a response that you could potentially just put in by clicking on it and yeah that could be interesting also there is uh, they're covering the fact that you could write an email write some text and then it will change the style of it so basically almost entirely rewrite the email rewrite gives you different versions of what you've written so you can choose the one you like best they also show that you could with this language model you could literally insert any prompt and then it would generate you a little poem to be kind of more personal for some people that you're gonna send it to this part brings some, some concerns to me and also they are showing yeah you could kind of manipulate and adjust and polish your CV if you were just about to send it and you want it to be looking as clean as possible and so the AI model would kind of correct it and fiddle it for you in order to get the job. But I guess at this point I'm thinking, well, if AI is doing this, it's going to be correcting your CV and this is not going to be your own words when the employer is going to hire you. It's like, well, let's assume they don't know. Yeah, you are not going to be this chat that wrote this answer. So essentially you're going to be lying. I would say that's probably not the best practice in my view and then well what's the point for the company to be hiring you if all the artificial intelligence can do the exactly the same thing and even better than you like writing the cv i think that was a bit weird in that sense like probably okay it's good for correcting the grammar you are just writing your text and the chat or like the artificial intelligence will be updating you like misspell the word i think that's perfectly fine because like we've been having these tools for ages now if you misspell the word you like you forgot an e at the end of the, the article and yeah that, that's that kind of stuff probably is all right i think but as soon as it starts getting more personal and doing more and more work for you i think that's a little bit worrying and like making these poems writing for you it loses this personal touch and connection. Yeah, maybe it's not going to be perfect, but if you actually did it, so I think that's what actually going to be valuable later in the future. So probably the things that we need to be doing now is super concentrate on ourselves and how we develop and not always rely on the technology because yeah, that's interesting. You need to be up to date, but also it's important to grow personally and grow as a human rather than be always relying on this technology. Yeah, Th that's just how I think about it. So maybe for some purposes, maybe for some advertising, it is going to be good. But I guess essentially what's going to be the most valuable thing is your human individual that will be present. and. Yeah, that's why it's important to grow and keep developing and keep becoming more interesting, keep getting better in all aspects of life. Because essentially, if you're just being basic and if no one is willing to listen to you, well, that's going to be a big issue and you're going to be easily replaceable by this artificial intelligence model. And that's just not going to be cool. I guess we should all be understanding that. Yeah, and that was that was just a quick update on this language model and other things so also i think they mentioned I, i'm gonna cover some other updates that i got, i think they were quite interesting and maybe concerning maybe worrying maybe not it's up to you to decide i guess maybe i'm just super against that kind of anti-personal touch from the technology doing the work for you but there's another thing they covered was an update on the iPad and when you write you could use your own handwriting but I thought 
well, well, that, that they've had it for a while and they've added smart features where you could use your handwriting and then it would autocorrect your handwriting into your like polished style. If with Smart Script, we're making handwriting your notes smoother than ever. It starts with improving the appearance of your writing as you write. And it would literally overwrite your text and put your letters more neatly. And again, I guess it could be good in some cases, but then also you're kind of losing that piece of imperfection that the human error produces and on a, I guess on a great, on a vast scale, yeah, if you get like a bunch of errors and if you need to delete the whole paragraph, you can just cross it out and it deletes it for you. But on a little scale, just a tiny mark, I guess this could be just the traces of the personal touch and how we as human interact with technologies. Because essentially, if we continue going the way this goes, this will be completely unpersonal, unrelated to any one system where we're all just numbers and words. I guess I could mention some of the fun things that were talked about on the presentation. And honestly, I did, I did think some of them were quite hilarious. For example, Apple finally allows us to move the apps around the screen like Android had it for God knows how many years like from the first release, I guess, where you, it doesn't necessarily, well, it snaps to the grid, but you're not forced to have all your app icons stuck into the top and you can actually move them around. I thought, well, after all these years, finally Apple, thank you. And also another feature that they proudly announced is that you can adjust the tint of the apps on the screen so you could customize the color scheme and adjust it completely as you wish change it from any color of the rainbow i just thought that was a little bit hilarious come on man like do you actually need to talk about this on the keynote i thought we were talking about big updates i mean maybe it's significant for some people but I just thought that was a very minor little thing. Yeah, okay, but you don't need to be so proud about it, Apple. It's just the color scheme, bro. Another thing that I didn't mention was the fact that Apple has partnered with ChatGPT for their artificial intelligence. There are other artificial intelligence tools available that can be useful for tasks that draw on broad world knowledge or offer specialized domain expertise. And we're starting out with the best of these, ChatGPT from OpenAI. Siri is now asking you, oh, well, if it, if it thinks that it cannot do a better job than ChatGPT, it will ask you whether you would like to forward this quest to ChatGPT. And I thought that was quite interesting for Apple. I mean, all the tech giants, they kind of been working on their own artificial intelligence models. And for Apple to be working with ChatGPT, I thought that was quite an interesting move. We're going to be seeing how this will continue. But yeah, I mean, maybe they will keep working on it and develop, eventually they will develop their own artificial intelligence, Apple intelligence model, but, or maybe they even acquire OpenAI for that reason. I just thought that was a bit of a funny move. It's like, well, Siri can't handle it you can forward your question to ChatGPT. It's obviously asking you for your, if you'd like to share your information. So it's prompting you in, so in order for privacy to be there. It's asking you, do you want to forward this prompt to ChatGPT? If it thinks it's not gonna be doing a good enough job. I think that was quite hilarious. Honestly, quite unexpected. Like Google has their own thing, no, no to ChatGPT. They develop their own stuff and Bing is developing their own stuff. But Apple, very interesting. A couple of other things to mention is that the Apple has also integrated with their artificial intelligence, the ability to create your own emojis. And this will be called Genmoji. That could be quite a fun little thing that people are gonna be using. Just adds a little, I guess, touch of differentness to the whole thing. Oh, damn, I bent my flask while I transported it again. 
Yeah, so may maybe they're even gonna keep some of the emojis that people create. That could be a fun little thing. They updated some widgets, some uh, a custom, what do they even call it? The dock menu, or, or uh, you know, the thing that you slide out. Yeah, you could, you could customize that even more. The thing on your lock screen, where you have the first instant tools available. So, for example, the, fla uh, the flash and the camera, you could customize that, make them different functions. Yeah, that could be a cool little update that I guess lots of people requested. But yeah, on that note, I can conclude the video. And if you thought that was some interesting discussion, share your thoughts in the comments. See what, tell me what features you thought were the most interesting and leave a like subscribe to the channel for more content like this and other content and see you in the next video bye bye